Perfect. Thank you. Well, welcome to worship today at, uh, at St. Stephen Lutheran Church. Today is October 18th. It's the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we get started. One, uh, we just want to thank so many people for uh, making it possible for worship to take place. Uh, Greg is our lector. Karen is our assisting minister. Abby is providing the music. Emma is providing singing. Jen is doing the tech. Uh, I want to thank Kevin also for preparing the, the bulletin and all the things that happen behind the scenes. <clears throat> and Grant is helping as well behind the scenes. So thank you very much. Reminder, please put uh, prayers in the chat section. We'll be happy to um, include those in the prayers of the congregation at the appropriate time. A uh, reminder for communion, we will be doing communion as we do each week, and I invite you to have uh, the elements ready uh, at hand. So a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine or grape juice is all you need, and we'll go through that uh, at the appropriate time. Uh, there's going to be one correction in the bulletin, um, and that is the psalm. We're going to play a, I'm going to share, do a share screen and play a video. It's the same video that I used at the eight o'clock service as well that will be in, in the place of the psalm. Um, in a couple of weeks, next week is uh, Reformation Sunday. And as part of our Reformation Sunday service, we'll be doing a dedication of the pergola that Randy Neidig uh, created and built. Uh, this afternoon at three o'clock is uh, Randy's Eagle Scout uh, Court of Honor. And uh, in two weeks is All Saints Sunday. And I've been putting this in the weekly emails that go out, but I want to just express this and really highlight this for you, is that we want to be able to honor those who have died, loved ones, family members who have died. And so I invite you to send me your pictures of loved ones, whether it's from this past year or from previous years, it doesn't matter. This is going to be a very different type of year. Uh, it's a different All Saints Sunday, of course. We won't be able to do what we normally do, which is light candles and all those type of things together. And so instead, what I'm, I'm doing is I'm compiling pictures of people that we want to remember for All Saints Sunday. So you can send me your uh, digital pictures if you have digital pictures. What I need attached to those is the person's name, how you're related to them, and their birth year and death year. And if you don't have a digital picture, that's okay too. You can still send me that information. We can go without a picture. Or if you have a picture, but you don't have a digital version of it, you can contact the church office or contact me either way. And we can arrange so that we can take a picture of your picture, and that way it can be incorporated into the honoring of the saints. So I just, I just ask that you please do this sooner rather than later. I know that uh, lots of folks have loved ones and friends and family that they would love, like to honor and remember. And so please send those to me very soon, within the next week, so that I have time to compile that and put it together into one video. Uh, and that way we'll be able to use it uh, for All Saints Sunday. If there's any questions, please reach out to the, to, the, uh, to the church office or reach out to me. I'll be happy to walk you through that. We'll be able to uh, put that together and I think it'll make for a very nice All Saints Sunday. Otherwise, please read the weekly uh, email that goes out. It's full of a lot of information. And there is a lot of information. And so you need to take your time and read that. You can also look at the website for upcoming events. And with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear our prelude.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that, the, that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. We'll continue with our gathering hymn, which is God is here. It's verses 1, 2, and 4 as they're printed in the bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll continue with our first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the 45th chapter. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of your servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I am you, though you do not know me so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hey, hey, bros! Yeah, some people are trying to sleep. You. Yeah, but, huh? You wanna turn the music off? Golly day. Be blood. There will be blood, my man.
<laughs> Get ready for the Reaper. Get ready for the Reaper. Actually, just wondering if um, if perhaps you could turn your music down a little bit. Oh yeah, no. Thank sure, you. no problem. Sorry, sorry about that. Thank you. No, yeah, yes. yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right. Well, have a good night. All right. Yeah. Well, you have a good night too. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the first chapter. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy. To the church, the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. 
Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left and went away. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In 1989, the camera company Canon released one of the most memorable commercials ever made. It featured a then 19-year-old tennis, upstart tennis star known for his rebellious attitude, his outrageous outfits, and his crazy hair, Andre Agassi. The commercial shows Agassi in various poses, hitting a tennis ball, laying around shirtless, of course, and driving an open-top Jeep while running his hand through his wild hair, kind of like what I'm doing right now, minus the hair. Interspersed throughout the ad is the product Canon was promoting, the Canon Rebel. What better way, what better spokesperson could there possibly be? But it's the end of the ad that made Andre Agassi world famous. The commercial was shot in the Nevada desert in Las Vegas, where Agassi is from. And you can see the blurred lights of Vegas in the background. Agassi had been instructed to step out of a white Lamborghini, lower his sunglasses while standing in an all white suit and utter the only words that Agassi would say for the entire ad, as well as the words that would forever follow him throughout his career. He joked, in his autobiography that these words would be his epitaph. These three words, that's all he said, three words, became the phrase that would haunt him when he failed and lift him up when he won. These three words would also go beyond their attachment to Andre Agassi. Three words, image is everything. When I think of today's encounter, that we hear about between Jesus and the Pharisees and the Herodians. The phrase image is everything perfectly sums up this gospel. And not just the portion we heard today, but the entirety of the gospel of Matthew. The gospel writer doesn't shy away from a sketchy image associated with Jesus. The very first thing written in Matthew's gospel is the genealogy of Jesus. Verse one, chapter one, says, an account of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. This is language loaded with royalty, faithfulness, and image. And then verses 2 through 16 list all of the descendants from Abraham to David and from David to Jesus. And if you read this list carefully, what you'll hear is a unique listing of people who have image problems. People who you wouldn't normally find themselves prominently listed in a genealogy of someone royal. In that list are the mighty, but also the weak and the outcast. In that list are women who are foreigners, prostitutes, and women who are raped and taken from their husbands. There are men who steal and kill. There are good kings and bad kings. And there's a host of people whose names mean very little and, go, and who beyond their name being known, we know very little about. This is how the Gospel of Matthew starts and portrays the image of Jesus. And it follows Jesus throughout the Gospel and his entire earthly life. I encourage you to scan through the Gospel and see how it plays out. Remember, image is everything. In the encounter we hear about today, the conflict of Jesus' image comes into focus, and Jesus turns the criticism of his image that has been following him his entire earthly life on its head and exposes his critics' empty image. But this isn't a solitary instance. We need to keep the encounter in context. The beginning of the previous chapter, chapter 21, tells us of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, done with great imagery and pageantry. It's Palm Sunday, and Jesus enters Jerusalem on a colt and a donkey, as foretold through the prophets Isaiah and Zechariah. There is great fanfare, palms waving, cheers of Hosanna to the son of David, 
the image must have been incredible. Image is everything after all. And the first place Jesus goes to, we are told, is the temple, where with great fanfare and imagery, Jesus overturns the tables of the money changers and quotes scripture and shows the true image of what he is about and how it conflicts with the established order of the temple, which exploited and oppressed the poor and hungry rather than serve them and feed them. Jesus exposes what the temple authority's true image was really about, no different than Rome. Remember, image is everything. Jesus then comes back to the temple on Monday of Holy Week, and his authority is questioned, and he tells parables that make it clear, crystal clear, to the Pharisees and the chief priests that he was talking about them, ruining the image that they carefully crafted for themselves, showing it to be a facade that easily crumbled. Remember, image is everything. And then we get to this encounter today the question about paying taxes. The gospel writer exposes the image of those opposed to Jesus in full light, exposing their true image. We're told that they plotted to entrap Jesus. They speak slick words that are full of excessive praise that they didn't believe one bit, designed to flatter Jesus and have him let down his guard. But their true image shows through. And Jesus knows it. He sees through the photoshopped image they present themselves as. We're told that Jesus was aware of their mal malice and tears down the facade of passive aggressive fake niceness and empty sincerity when he says, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Image may be everything, but true image allows us to see clearly. Jesus says, show me the coin used for the tax, and they brought him the coin. And then he asked this question, whose head is on this and whose title? In other words, what image is this? He turns their trap into a mirror. The trap was believing and proclaiming that image was everything, but false images aren't everything. They're lies designed to deceive and lead people astray image isn't everything. True image allows us to see clearly. They answered the emperors. And then Jesus shines the light on the whole situation when he says, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperors and to God the things that are God's, which raises the real question of what Jesus is asking. What belongs to God and what falls outside of belonging to God? If God is the creator, then God's imprint is on everything God creates. There is nothing that doesn't belong to God. And while the coin might belong to the emperor because it bears his image, guess whose image the emperor bears? Guess who the emperor belongs to? God. How about the Pharisees and the chief priests? Whose image do they bear? Who do they belong to? If you have a mirror or a phone that can take a selfie, I'd encourage you to take it out either now or you can do it later. Take a look at the image that you see. Whose image do you bear? Who do you belong to? You you, you are made in the image of God. You bear God's image and likeness. When you look at yourself in the mirror or in a picture, you're looking at the image of God. You are seeing Jesus. But this isn't just for us, because that wouldn't be the full picture. That would just be one pixel. Look around you, either in your home or look at the screen and look at the other people that are there. What do you see? Whose image does the person you encounter bear? Who do they belong to? God, Jesus. The same Jesus who asks the question and asks us, whose image is this? How about those we disagree with? 
Jesus asks us, whose image do they bear? Who do they belong to? How about those in an opposing political party? Whose image do they bear? Who do they belong to? How about those that are financially poorer or wealthier than ourselves? Whose image do they bear? Who do they belong to? How about those that are from another country, regardless of whether they came here legally or illegally, whose image do they bear? How about those experiencing homelessness? Whose image do they bear? How about those who are in bondage to a drug or sexual addiction? Whose image do they bear? How about those whose sexuality is different from our own? Whose image do they bear? How about those whose skin color is different than our own? Whose image do they bear? Who do they all belong to? God, the same God, the same Jesus, who we all belong to, no exceptions. We are intimately linked to all of these people. Yes, even our enemies and those we hate because of the image we all bear the image that is imprinted on us, the image of God, the only image that matters. Because each of us are pixels in a large photograph that shows the true image of God. And the image is one of love. Love is what is imprinted on us. And that is the image that is shown for all the world to see. And love shows itself in a variety of ways, forgiveness, mercy, Grace, welcoming, listening, feeding, giving, and more. This isn't anything new, though. We hear stories about it all the time. Maybe we've even experienced this ourselves. We hear about heroic soldiers who sacrifice their lives in order to save countless lives of their comrades. We hear about first responders who risk it all to save complete strangers. It comes out in stories about responses to natural and human-made disasters. Even enemies come to the aid of those in need. Jesus is projecting the image of God for all to see. Let those who have eyes see it in themselves, in others, in enemies, in all of creation. Kelly Trujillo, the editor of Today's Christian Woman, closed with the following statement when she wrote about the secret to loving your enemies. She said, recognizing the imago dei, which is the image of God, in my enemies doesn't magically erase negative feelings that arise, but it does forcibly reorient my perspective away away from my feelings and onto the cross. Thank the Lord that as Romans 5.10 says, our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies. Terrorist, abuser, adulterer, sinner. Our indelible God-given dignity remains, for we are each made in his image, and that will never change. I think all of this is best represented in the story of Dirk Willems. He was born in the Netherlands and was baptized as a young man. He later rejected infant baptism, being an Anabaptist, and was condemned by the church, which then arrested him. He escaped the prison he was being held in. Using rope made out of knotted rags, he climbed out of the prison and into the, onto the frozen moat that surrounded the prison. A guard noticed his escape and went after him. Willems easily made it across the frozen moat because he had survived on prison rations and had lost significant weight. But the guard wasn't so lucky. He broke through the ice and yelled for help as he struggled in the icy water. Willems turned back to save the life of, her, of his pursuer, which caused him to be recaptured and held. And you know how he was rewarded? He was burned at the stake on May 16, 1569. Image may be everything, but the true image is what matters most, the image that we all bear. It's the answer to the question that Jesus asks, whose image is this? Who do we belong to?
Amen. We'll continue with our hymn of the day, which is let every voice lift every voice and sing. We're going to sing verse three. Continue with our Apostles' Creed. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy One, our church needs your guidance. We argue over policies and forget your mission for us. We forget you. Remind us of what is important. Be with the whole church, its leaders, its members, and those it serves, inspiring faith, love, and endurance, and uplifting us to be an example to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, this physical world needs you as well. We pray for an end to the rampant pollution and depletion of natural resources. Help us instead to notice and take joy in the simple gifts you give us each day, from the beauty of sunrise to the grandeur of sunset. Let our gratitude guide us to protect your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, spark in us gifts of reconciliation. Daily we fight and speak words that divide. We are distracted. By other gods. We need to sing a new song. Today we pray that all of us, leaders and citizens alike, might see the wisdom in speaking words of peace and partnership. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, be with the poor, the oppressed, the sick, the bereaved, and the lonely. Hear their cries and guide us to be your hands in helping them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, or healing Lord, go before all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, leveling the mountains that they face so that they might be healed. 
Fill them with the joy of the Holy Spirit. We especially pray for comfort and healing for all those currently on the prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord, our prayer. Lord. God of love, be with this family of believers at St. Stephen as we seek your will for us through the R3 renewal process, as we adapt because of pandemic restrictions, and as we head into a new church year, walk with us and talk to us. We want to encounter you. Help us to avoid the traps of this world and to discern how to use our gifts and skills to further your work here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord, our prayer. Lord. We pray for all who have died this last week and for all who mourn after their passing. Bring comfort to the bereaved and salvation to the deceased. We also honor St. Luke the Evangelist, a respected physician and artist who followed your call, including recording the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for Sue West as she continues to cope with symptoms of MS. Prayers for wisdom, strength, comfort, and peace for Fran as she prepares for her upcoming hip surgery. Prayer for all the broken hearts, for healing and continued grace of love from the Church of Christ and from heaven. Prayer of thanks for Pat's son-in-law, Glenn Hebert, who was told that he is now considered cancer-free due to surgery. Thanks be to God. Parker's daughter, Karen Lee, almost finished with the second section of chemo. Prayer of thanks for the confirmation of Stacy's nephew, Luke, this morning. Prayers for Jane's husband, Mike, who is having an outpatient procedure tomorrow morning. Prayer for any and all the lost sheep throughout the world so that the call of the shepherd can reach them in the far reaches of the universe and that they can hear it and answer their savior and redeemer. Prayer for a tiny little more love to pour into our hearts, into the world, to lift up the afflicted who lost their faith because of a broken system or have witnessed so much hatred in this life. Prayers for all of those who have COVID-19 or have loved, who have lost loved ones who have COVID-19, especially as the pandemic comes into a second wave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us show a sign of that peace. And as we've prepared the table, I invite you to prepare your own table. You'll need a little bit of bread and either some wine or some grape juice. You don't need a whole lot, just enough that can be consumed right away. At the end of the meal, anything that you have left over either needs to be consumed or it needs to be returned back to the ground. The idea is that the elements are returned back to where they came from they also bear God's image as well. And so it's returned back to God if we can't consume them and finish them. We continue with our offering. Instructions are in the bulletin on, uh, on different ways to give. And I thank you for your generosity. It is because of the offering that we're able to do the ministries that happen, both here and outside from here as well. Ministry happens in a lot of different ways. It happens in pastoral care. It happens in worship. It happens in when people pick up the phone and call each other in a variety of different ways. 
And I just encourage you to continue to give in those variety of different ways. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. I invite you to hold up whatever bread that you have so that we can continue. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to Hold up your cup, whether it's filled with wine or grape juice. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all of the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, spirit of freedom, and let the church say amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body and blood of our Lord broken and shed for you, you may consume the elements. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. We'll continue with our sending him you servants of God, verses one through four, as they're printed in the bulletin. <laughs>
Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one, no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.